Good day and good evening. Welcome to our webinar series on global sustainability. I'm Jia Xing Li, one of the science officers of the, uh, both the Center for Sustainability Science and Future Earth. I'm also the administrative officer of Future Earth Taipei. Future Earth is a global program promoting sustainability science. And Future Earth Taipei is one of the national committees under Future Earth. Today's webinar organized jointly by Future Earth Secretariat and Future Earth Taipei Sustainability in the Digital Age, SDA Working Group. This webinar will focus on sustainable education in the digital age. If you are interested in our future activities, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. The page name is Future Earth Taipei or at Future Earth TPE. The moderator today is Dr. Stephen Yang. Dr. Yang is the coordinator of the Future Earth Taipei SDA Working Group. He is the vice president of, of research at the National Central University in Taiwan. Dr. Yang is also the chair professor of the Department of Computer Science and Information in the university. Dr. Yang's expertise includes AI, machine learning, big data, learning uh, analytics, AI for human-centered education, and digital technology for sustainability. Let's welcome our moderator, Dr. Yang. The floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Jeffrey. So I share my slide here. Just a little bit. Oh. Morning, everyone. Um, uh, thank you for uh, Jeffrey. Thank you for your introduction and hello to Hiroaki and Owen and all the audience. I'm Stephen Yang. Uh, right now, I'm in Taitung University. It's quite far from uh, Taipei because I'm uh, attending a conference. So it's quite a, a creative act action activities that we join. Uh, our local conference uh, with the Future Earth Taipei and SDA. So today's talk is about the sustainable education in the digital age. We will consider uh, education, considering sustainability, uh, to cover the some of the important uh, SDG goals. Uh, and today's talk will focus uh, more on the sustainable learning analytics. Uh, I wish to make a difference from education. In fact, uh, learning analytics is right now making a lot of uh, difference. Uh, take a look at the, the picture from Garner's. Uh, so it's a horizontal is a difficulty and the vertical is a value. So when things get more difficult, but they, it will result a great value. Take the descriptive uh, analytics, uh, it reveal what happened in our class and then move to diagnostic analytics, it can reveal why did it happen. Then the predictive analytics will show us what will happen. And finally, is the most difficult, but the most valuable part is the prescriptive analytics, which will show us how can we make it happen, some good result. In fact, this diagram is pretty much like a precision education. Uh, I proposed uh, a couple of years ago. So we try to, uh, from the core technology, move to one education uh, to put more humanity into our design of technology. So when we continue to uh, develop much um, advanced education technology, we also need to make reflection on ethical and uh, societal change on education, especially on the four goals, quality education, 
and gender equity and reduce inequity and uh, a partnership from the four SDGs. The learning analytics we talk about uh, mainly is can provide teachers uh, like us uh, how to, to major and understand and also know the difference uh, of our students. Learning analytics also uh, provide the early prediction and the timely intervention, which is very important uh, when we try to diagnose and uh, we do uh, a prescriptive uh, to the learning difficulty of students. And all of this have to depends on a lot of uh, data in the algorithm. So the problem is the data and the algorithm, sometimes they are biased due to the culture and the language, which will result in mis misuse of this uh, data and the algorithms. So it's important to understand and know the societal impact, and we need to take humanity and from the very beginning when we design a system in order to prevent uh, such biases. So it's quite important to avoid the misuse and the bias of the data and the algorithms. And from the a couple of uh, points like uh, ethics, fairness, transparency, trustworthy, and privacy, in order to work toward a sustainable education system. So here we propose uh, something of uh, sustainable learning analytics uh, to uh, guide us to a better research for the, the sustainability. Uh, I divided from uh, into three parts. Uh, one is ethical and uh, social and the resilience. Ethical cover uh, fairness and equities. Uh, and in the nowadays, uh, uh, it's evidence-based. I, I believe Hiroaki will mention that. So everything needs to be explainable and uh, trustworthy. From the social point of view, we have to pay more attention to the diversity and the inclusion. This is very important to eliminate some uh, inequality and uh, improve our social relationship. And also we need to uh, pay attention to privacy and data governance and make it accountable. Then comes to resilience. Uh, as we know, the environment has been changing a lot, especially from the COVID-19 infected the whole environment and the learning situation has been changed. So how to make our education system more robust and safety and make our uh, source more accessible and uh, can adapt it to the environment becoming more and more important. That is the resilience education. So I will cover one by one and uh, show you some idea of it. The first is uh, fairness and uh, uh, equities. So everything needs to be fair and uh, impartiality. So, so it, it needs a, a kind of a balance. So what is fairness? Which means we can uh, produce a fair result. It's very important. No matter how technology is advanced, if the result is unfair, then the result is useless. Not only the result, but also the process. So the analysis process have to e eliminate any discrimination or any unfair analysis uh, from uh, race, religion, uh, physical disabilities, and so on. Here we take a look at why the uh, data and the algorithm uh, some, sometimes is we call the bias because the training data we used for a train an AI algorithm is a, a data from the regular uh, news articles or from some uh, our they, uh, 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 our, our daily life, okay, and many of them inherited some uh, biases uh, uh, embedded in language and the cultures. Uh, I believe no matter it is the Western and the Eastern, uh, our language and the culture will result in such a bias, and that we are inherited to the algorithm training and resulting uh, bias algorithm. I think in AI, a very uh, fam uh, familiar or a uh, well-known word embedding is a typical example. Uh, due to its training is from the internet and all the internet stuff, sometimes it is uh, fake news or wrong data, uh, which will result in a serious uh, 
situation uh, for the racial stereotype. And uh, when we say uh, equities, not only the data set, but also the uh, workforce, uh, which means the minority or uh, women should have uh, at least equal job opportunity. Those things are deserve our attention. And there is a fair assessment, especially in the learning analytics. Assessment is so important. But uh, again, it, we are in, inherited some social, racial, and gender biases. And so we need some uh, aligned rubrics and diversi diversify the training set in order to uh, improve the transparency and the expert ex explainabilities. And here is a when we can do the assessment automatically, for example, the auto answering, auto question generation, auto essay grading, everything could automatic. Then can we can, can we human trust such uh, automatic assessment results? It's a quite an interesting import, and important issues. So autonomous is good. Can, can we fully trust or, or we need more human control. So this is deserve a, a discussion. So how to earn trust? Trust comes with uh, accuracy. The result must be correct and transparency. So the data and the algorithm must be transparent, clear enough to earn people's trust. And it has to be explainable, especially the process have to be explainable and then uh, cause a fair result. So everything such like uh, decision making, the process need the explanation in order to earn our trust. So explainability is uh, referred to providing certain degree of transparency. So it need to transparent enough in order to explain. And uh, with a transparent explanation can earn the trust to the decision making. So how to explain the process of reaching conclusion and adjusting the transparency becomes more and more important. And now comes to the diversity, okay. Um, inclusion is uh, important, I believe in, in, in the ESG and in many enterprise, uh, inclusion for the uh, diverse, diversify uh, race and uh, genders is uh, important in the human resource department. And here we say inclusion is based on diversity, equity, and the belonging. Even in school, it's the same thing. So we say uh, inclusive education needs to identify and break down any systematic barriers to inclusion and make our students to learn and knowing their belonging and empower our students, bring their whole self to learning and they inspire to learn. And here's the privacy and uh, data governance. As you know, uh, when we do data collection, we need uh, fully consent from the stakeholders and provide them enough data security and their personal privacy. So we need uh, proper norms and rules and uh, who control the data and the data must be anonymous. Uh, need to do the identification, things like that, is also in the category of privacy and the data governance. And finally is uh, accountability. I changed a little bit the idea of accountability. Uh, so I use the two words, accountable and accountable. So it's quite important we treasure what do we major. So it's important, as I mentioned before, learning analytics is mainly for the major and assessment of students' performance. So we treasure what do we major. But what counts can't always be majored. So this is a philosophy issue. And what's measurable doesn't always count. So the heart of educational data infrastructure is conscious humanity and a scientific responsibility. So the humanity and the scientific responsibility is much more important than those the infinite data and the limited experiment. Finally, comes to our SDG 17. I think uh, Hiroaki will follow this, uh, he, he will cover this in his talk too. 
it's a book road partnership between uh, Taiwan and uh, Japan. In fact, it's a Kyoto University. So what do we have accomplished in recent years? We already have this much uh, members. Uh, we, we have a partnership including 32 universities. We have uh, 84 teachers and uh, 383 courses and more than 22,000 students participating in this uh, partnership. And I would like to end my talk with uh, Michael Jordan, my favorite basketball players, and also the pride of Chicago. I'm graduated from Chicago. Michael Jordan said, I'm not sure this is called by him or not anyway. It's, it's a talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence wins championship. So, um, as a uh, researchers and as uh, a leader in Taiwan's uh, digital learning, so we are very proud to work with the Kyoto University. Uh, so this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much. And I will stop my sharing. Okay. So uh, Jeffrey. We'll introduce uh, Professor Hiroaki Ogata, right? Jeffrey? Uh, Professor Yang, well, would you like to uh, introduce Professor Ogata? Oh, sure. That's my pleasure. Okay. Um, Hiroaki, would you like to, you know, share your screen so while you are doing that i can introduce you okay okay so professor hiroaki okata why well, he's uh, my best friend and he already accomplished a lot of work in japan uh, professor okata is right now the uh, full professor in kyoto university as you can see from his uh, slide uh, he runs a uh, lots of uh, very uh, huge and important project for Japanese government. And Professor Ogata is also a very close friend to Taiwan. He can travel a lot of time to Taiwan and he, he will show you and we are amazing you how close he is with Taiwan. So let's welcome uh, Professor Hiroaki Ogata. Okay, oh, Hiroaki, thank you very much. Yeah. Please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Yeah. I'm very much honored to, yeah, and pleased to give a talk in this uh, such precious uh, conference. Thank you very much. Okay. So uh, today I will talk about uh, learning evidence and analytics framework for sustainable education. So actually, uh, Steve already mentioned, yes, I have been uh, to Taiwan many times, yeah, actually, yeah. So in before the COVID-19, yes, I, and also uh, Steve visited uh, Kantin to attend ICC conference, yeah. So I hope, I really hope, uh, yeah, to visit Taiwan again uh, very soon. Yeah. Okay, so here's the uh, outline of my talk. Uh, I will uh, a little bit uh, talk about the our LEAF framework and then how the uh, framework can be used for sustainable education. Okay, so our research is currently focused on uh, recording all the uh, learning and teaching process throughout the uh, lifetime and also collect the uh, whole in Japan and, and then use the data for sustainable development of education. So, maybe, yeah, the, the students we you uh, enter this uh, 
the school and then elementary school and sometimes they go to cram school and uh, some of the students use some uh, tools, edtech tools, and then enter the uh, high school and and then university. In the university, maybe uh, some of the students access to the MOOCs to take some uh, online course. Yeah, so there are a lot of the uh, opportunity to use such kind of the uh, tools and and enter the schools and so the the problem is the uh, the learning record is currently uh, very uh, distributed, not well organized, and uh, the most of them are just waste, and uh, we cannot use all the uh, data currently. But if we can use this kind of data, maybe uh, we can use the uh, data for. Improve, improving the education and teaching learning process. That's what <laughs> I say, I want to say. Uh, yeah, in Japan, uh, uh, we have uh, this number of the uh, schools and the problem is how, how to collect the data from this kind of schools. So first we need some uh, uh, information infrastructure. So. At least we need uh, to have uh, one uh, um, this, uh, laptop PC for one student. So fortunately, the Japanese government already uh, distributed the computers to the uh, student in the elementary school to the junior high school. So we have distributed 9 million PCs last year. And this is the total amount. And so then we can collect all the data from the uh, whole the schools in Japan. But now it's just started. So we are now struggling this, to do this. And in uh, uh, Japanese science, uh, science Council also uh, proposed this kind of the uh, vision. I was a member of this uh, some committee, and so first um, we should use some the educational data, but the educational data is also uh, has some problem with the uh, privacy and the government, or something. and then uh, we need to carefully deal with this kind of data. And also, uh, we should have some uh, the rules to collect all the, uh, the data, the rules and policies we need to have this one. Yeah. And also, we need to have the infrastructure to collect the data. And then also, we need to uh, Natural the uh, teachers and the students and parents and researchers to um, utilize the, the data. So the learning analytics is the key technology to analyze the, uh, the educational data. So we uh, we collect the uh, the data from the not only inside classroom, but also in outside school, like home. And then uh, the system analyzes the data and give the feedback to the student and the teacher. So here is the, some example of the uh, educational data which we collected, current, uh, collecting currently. So, <clears throat> So not only the uh, um, some uh, score data, use the process data, which is collected from the uh, uh, LMS or ebook or video lecturing or something. Like that. So, but the, this data is automatically uh, 
uh, corrected by using the uh, tablet and computers and some tools. <clears throat> so, so far, most of the data is not so used to improve the education, but we are trying to use the, yeah, this kind of data. So here is the, this table shows how to use educational data. So mainly uh, the, the data is an analyzed to give the feedback to the uh, uh, individual person, like students and teachers and parents. And also in the institutional level, we can use the data to, for example, optimize the yeah, curriculum so Thing, if we collect the educational data in all the uh, uh, national level, and then we can use the data for uh, policy makers to correct to create and yeah evaluate the policies. And also, we researchers use this uh, big data to find evidences like that new learning theories and educational theories. Yeah. So that, that's a big advantage for uh, to use this kind of data. And currently our uh, research lab is getting this kind of uh, research funding. And then we developed the if system, uh, it's short for learning and evidence and analytics framework. So the students and the teachers use the uh, LMS and then <clears throat> we develop the uh, ebook reader called the book roll to record all the learning process by using ebook and then uh, this to provide the uh, reading uh, process data and record the uh, yeah the data as a, a XAPI standard format and then develop and the analytics tools for its area view. So actually. The learning record store is the uh, repository, uh, which is the uh, stored in store the data in each schools and for each uh, tools like MOOCs, and then uh, we propose the blockchain to connect all the uh, distributed learning records, and then we can extract some uh, evidence, provide the <clears throat> evidence to the such uh, makers. So, yeah, currently the, our e framework used in some universities and also uh, several uh, K-12 schools in Japan. Also, uh, thanks to the uh, Steve, yeah. Uh, in Taiwan, LEAF is now also used in some uh, universities. In, in India, and also China, Turkey, some other countries. <clears throat> um, yeah, here, here is the uh, interface of the uh, ebook group. Yeah. So you go to the next page, and then uh, all the, this kind of the actions can be uh, recorded. Uh, learning of like this table. We have uh, uh, 15 actions. Yeah through this, uh, this uh, book roll interface. All the data is recorded. And then uh, we, uh, we are developing the uh, yeah, 
study analytics to for the local palette. So, for example, this graph shows the uh, how how long is the student take take uh, to read us specific page, the first page and second page and third page. So probably uh, 14, this page is very difficult because it takes a longer time to read. And then, uh, for example, the, uh, the look for a dashboard um, show the uh, data to the uh, student and teachers. So, so here is the uh, students made some, create some uh, markers in the ebook. So yellow marker means the, it's difficult for the student to understand, yeah. So, <clears throat> red marker means it's important, important keywords. And then uh, this uh, shows the, uh, all the student markers for one page, yeah. So, so, so yellow, I mean, for example, this uh, this keyword has a dark yellow markers. This means the many students have made a yellow markers in for this keyword. So teachers should take a longer time to uh, should, should explain about this uh, uh, vocabulary because we, yeah, most of the uh, students didn't understand yeah so who are using this kind of the tools the teachers are uh, <clears throat> uh, teachers provide explanation according to their experience but by using this uh, these tools the teacher can uh, understand what the student currently cannot understand. Yeah. So <laughs> it's the kind of the uh, data driven uh, teaching. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this uh, post design with the close. So before class, the teacher should register the teaching material to the book load and then a uh, student read the content with book load and then before just before the classroom teacher access to the dashboard to see the student current situations and the and then the classroom the teacher give the feedback So let me give you some example in specific course like mathematics and English course. <clears throat> yeah, so in the mathematics course, the teacher gives some uh, quiz into uh, provide some quiz into the in the in the book roll and then uh student use the pen tablet to write answers system automatically analyze the uh handwritten answers according to the uh, 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 stack point so stack point means the uh, student stop to write uh, answers yeah so yellow, I'm sorry, a uh, 
Let stroke means the student take a longer time to write or writing. Yeah. So uh, this kind of features can be used to categorize the uh, all the uh, handwritten answers, and then the teacher immediately shows the uh, one kind of the uh, representative answers to the student in front of the class. So this kind of the activities uh, can be done by using papers before, but it takes a longer time. But by using tablet, yeah, it's easy to So that's why currently every all I'm sorry, uh, the teachers like to use this kind of the tools in the classroom. And also uh, the system recommends some quiz uh, in the dashboard and uh, not only just provide recommendation of the quiz, but also the, the system provides some explanations and some reasons uh, why the system uh, recommend this quiz. Yeah. So uh, to do so, uh, that we ask the student to enter some uh, self-explanation and yeah. <clears throat> then the system analyzes some uh, explanation and student explanation and then finds some start, start point and then recommendation and then provide some uh, explanation and yeah, so, uh, So it's kind of the that's echo cycle to improve the uh, recommendation process. So in the English classroom, we propose the activity strategies clear. <clears throat> so in a yeah, two Q3 are consist of the scan and scheme and question and deed reply and review process. In each process, the student use the uh, uh, markers and memos. Then <clears throat> yeah. Introduce this uh, TSQ 3R in the classroom and then uh, actually in the first week, <clears throat> the student markers is the uh, like this, but after the uh, two weeks, the student made the uh, red marker in the same place. If this means the why uh, some the uh, skill to find out the very important uh, sentences and vocabularies. And, and skin problems, yeah. Also the student questions Changed uh, across the two weeks. Yeah. And we have some uh, uh, good results. Uh, uh, experiment. Um, also, we can 
by some uh, <clears throat> group formation, automatic group formation functions by using uh, educational data. So the, the teachers uh, give some, some uh, parameters to uh, uh, create a group. And then uh, the system shows uh, results. So <clears throat> according to this, uh, the student previously uh, running record and also the some, uh, workload usage or some uh, quiz scores, the system automatically uh, creates the uh, optimal group formation. Yeah. Okay, and then we have another project and um, to develop the uh, self-direction skill. So this project, uh, students set some plan. For example, the, how many, uh, how many, how long the student reads some um, uh, English textbook each day, yeah, for example, the students set some 20 minutes to read uh, English textbook. And then uh, this, by using the book roll, the student reading activities can be uh, stored automatically in the database and then students can monitor their own activities and then make a reflection. So uh, through this process, uh, the system support to um, support students to um, develop the yeah, self-direction skill. This graph shows the uh, improvement of the uh, reading skill, skill of the uh, student. Yeah. And of the uh, system. Because, uh, uh, we have some uh, extensive reading skills also or improves like this. Okay. Also here is uh, we can extract some evidence through the uh, educational data. So for example we can compare uh, the <clears throat> the, um, the score and with the other classroom source, yeah. And then we can find some ex evidence. And then uh, we can share the evidence and then uh, apply the um, evidence <laughs> uh, teaching method in our Classroom. Yeah. So here is the leaf uh, framework for education. So leaf uh, framework is open, so it's easy to uh, access to the data and also extend extensively. I mean, use the uh, you can add your own uh, tools and yeah, 
to the <coughs> this uh, framework and also it's connected and also plastic and evidence and human center. Okay, so let me explain yeah, how we can use the leaf system for sustainable education. Stages. And next can actually the education is the yeah very important factor to <clears throat> for the SDGs, all the uh, uh, topics of the SDGs. So that's why the uh, UNESCO proposed the education for sustainable development from framework for 2030. So pri priority areas are advancing policy and transforming learning and training environment and developing capacities of educators and trainers and empowering and mobilizing the youth and accelerating sustainable solutions from current level. So also the yeah, Okay, so evidence informed implementation to monitor emerging issues and trends are important. Yeah. And also uh, conducting the learning analytics in the local level. Also with partners, also important to uh, implement the evidence informed uh, education. Yeah. <clears throat> So our LEAF framework can be used for sustainable development of education by collecting data and also by sharing the evidence. And, and the second also can be used the, for education for sustainable de development. Okay, so the partnership is also important to facilitate our, yeah. So to facilitate our partnership, we are going to apply some funding with uh, Steve. So the uh, education by a new funding Topic like international joint research through the establishment of new research fund category. Yeah, we call it international leading research. So, through this funding, uh, and support the uh, joint international research with overseas to prepare researchers. Mm. And, and promote the uh, publication of the high quality international joint uh, papers and articles. Yeah. So expect to exchange the uh, young uh, researchers for two or three years uh, joint research. Yeah. So currently we are now planning to apply from Japan team and Taiwan team. So we have the overview of the uh, national leading research. Yeah. The aim is yeah, to publish the high quality international joint papers. And then to do so, to exchange the long term uh, exchange for young scholars. 
and its term is the seven years. So also we can extend for 10 years. So also if the overseas research team could get a matching found account in their country, so that would be yeah great to support the mutual yeah student exchange. So actually uh, this fund just support to send young scholars to the uh, overseas, because, yeah. So maybe if the there are some a matching fund to <clears throat> to send, yeah, some scholars to Japan, and that would be great. Okay. Also, yeah, we will. Help the uh, awareness uh, conference in this August. I think. Uh, I think we will have an online, yeah, <clears throat> uh, event. Yeah. And thank you very much. So now it's a class is in Kyoto. So. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you very much, Hiroaki. Very, uh, very inspiring and uh, interesting research. Uh, Professor Ogata uh, addressed his uh, past research from the uh, very beginning of his uh, research for the Japanese government. Uh, I believe many of you and see a slide showing the huge amount of grant. Uh, Hiroaki received from Japan's government. It's, it's, uh, and uh, also the leave systems uh, he present is uh, for the uh, great sustainable uh, education in the future. And I believe many of you are interested in the Kakenhi uh, sponsored by Kakenhi means uh, research grant. Uh, Kakeni, Kakeni is in Japanese, right? Pronounced. Am I yes. pronounced right? Yes. Kakeni, right? Kakeni is a research grant from uh, Japanese government. They have a JSPS, uh, very much like our uh, most or our coming uh, NSF, new new NSF, the funding agencies. So Professor Ogata received uh, uh, many funding from there, and for that the new uh, Kakeni project is uh, international research. Leading research project, and as uh, Professor Gata showed in his uh, slide, and he's looking for some uh, high, highly active, excellent, uh, good researchers from Taiwan. Right from this slide, uh, we can see on the right button side, uh, Taiwan top level researchers. I believe many of our top researchers already in in our classroom. Uh, I will show you later on. Could you? Okay move the camera a little bit to our audience. Yeah. Hiroaki, I would like to show you there are many your admirers come for you. Uh, let's move our camera a little bit. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. You see <laughs> Thank that? you. Yeah. Many of Thank your you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So back to the slide, uh, we, we have some uh, high level Taiwanese researchers and uh, I think we, we are trying looking for uh, some uh, major fundings, uh, as, you, as you say. Uh, and that, well, we will come back and discuss that uh, later. Okay, I believe our audience have many you know, ideas and that would, and would like to share with you. So let's move to, yeah. So let's once again thank you very much uh, for Professor Oro Hiroaki Ogata's uh, talk. Now let's move to our third speaker uh, is uh, Owen Lu. Uh, Owen Lu, we are uh, Owen and I are in the same classroom, so 
Uh, let me introduce him first. Uh, Owen is a very young and talented scholar, uh, graduated from uh, National Central University. Right now he is in uh, Pindong University. It's uh, not very south, right? Pindong University. Uh, anyway, Pindong is on the south part of Taiwan. Is an assistant professor and also the director for incubation centers. So let's uh, welcome uh, Professor Owen Lu for his uh, talk. Okay, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Professor Yang, to uh, introduce me here, and uh, sorry, introduce me and invite me to come here. Uh, so today I am going to talk about the topic applying AI technology for understanding ESG ratings. My name is Owen. I come from National. I come from National Pindong University, and uh, I'm uh, yeah. Just like but introduced by Professor Yang, I'm assistant professor at the uh, Computer Science. Information Technology Department. And uh, uh, here is the outline today. Okay, here, here, here is the outline today. Uh, I, I'm going to introduce what is MSCI first and also ESG. Then, uh, be, because the presentation today is based on a industry cooperation project. So I, I, I would like to introduce what is their requirement right now. And uh, uh, we also provide a proposal to them uh, in order to fulfill their requirements. Uh, the idea is machine reading comprehension test. So I, I'm going to introduce that in detail later. Then uh, also introduce our preliminary results. So even the project is ongoing, not finished yet, uh, but we already have some idea how to extend our effort to some other domain, for example, the SDG domain. So I will also share my idea uh, later the presentation. Okay, first of all, uh, MSCI and uh, also ESG. What is MSCI? Morgan Stanley Capital International. In fact, this is a international company established at 1969. And uh, they trying very hard to uh, benchmark companies um, performance. Okay, so in order to support their investor, to make um, the investment decisions. And uh, I, I, right now, I would like to share one example to you to tell you what, how important is it. In fact, there is a company in Taiwan, the name is Wistron Corporate. Um, in fact, they have been removed it from the MSCI list um, February 9, 2022. So as you can see right here, um, their stock price dropped 10% in only two days. Uh, it is because they've been removed from the index. So it is highly uh, related to the stock price, uh, the, the MSCI index. Okay, and the, what is ESG? ESG, in fact, is one of the index um, provided by MSCI. ESG here stands for environment, social, and the governance. Environment here uh, means uh, environment protection. Social, or you can say social responsibility, and the governance um, means governance transparency. So every factor here, or every item here, in fact, is one of the risk. Uh, if you are hosting, if you have a company, it is, in fact, this is a risk. So ESG stands for, uh, which is a approach in order to uh, evaluate uh, whether a company take actions in order to prevent the risk of damage. Yeah, so if you are a company take so many actions in order to protect yourself, protect yourself on the risk. So MSCI will increase your rating. Uh, that's what is very important uh, recent, recently. And uh, uh, taking another example, Russia and the Ukrainian war. Um, 
in order to stop the war, in order to push uh, Russia to stop, to attack Ukraine. MSCI even um, cut off the governance rating from B to triple B uh, for today, uh, Russia, in order to stop the war. So this is one way to, uh, one, one of the section uh, methodology. So how does MSCI rating uh, the ESG? Uh, in fact, MSCI published one diagram like this on the internet. So as you can see, they collect um, hundreds, thousands, uh, even millions of data. We got here we call the publicly available data from internet. And then they categorize those data into ESG actions, uh, into certified categories. Uh, here, sorry, not uh, quite clear, but here there, there are two keywords. The first one is risk, and the second one is opportunity. In fact, uh, people call in MSCI, they say the certified key issues. But for me, I think that is more close to certified risk, like you have to take care of it uh, when, if you have a company. Then uh, they will map the scope into a rating like this from triple C to triple A. This is the ESG ratings. Okay, let me give you one example on what is risk and opportunity. Uh, during, again, during the Russia uh, and the Ukrainian war, uh, there are two onion, uh, sorry, Nian um, batteries start to work. So they, they stopped it to provide the material to the semiconductor industry. Then uh, that is one of the risks for the company like uh, TSMC, which is the best uh, semiconductor um, company in Taiwan. However, they publish a message that they claim they have reserved stock of now for the near term. So which means they take actions before the damage happen. So if I were MSCI, I think I will uh, increase their uh, rating result because uh, as you can see the message like here, um, they trying to protect themselves and uh, because they are monitoring all kinds of risks they have right now. Okay, what is, um, what is our customer requirement? Uh, like I say, the, the the project like this, we cooperate with uh, a semiconductor uh, company. And uh, uh, of course, uh, as I said earlier, the rating is highly correlated to the stock price. So every people in the industry, in the market, trying to get very high uh, rating uh, result from MS MSCI. So uh, they, they ask us, uh, maybe we can propose some idea to trying to improve their rating results. So our idea is um, like we can uh, ask the computer to read as much report as possible because every year they have to publish reports. So our idea is trying to improve their report quality in order to get very, uh, in order to get better ESG results. And uh, what we did, what we done, uh, it's uh, we we are, we are going to review uh, companies uh, ESG key issues, and the then based on the the uh, extraction result, maybe we can build some advanced application. For example, uh, we can build a prediction model and using the prediction model to predict their ESG results uh, or ESG rating of the year. Of course, uh, because we collect data, so we can also. Uh, compare, uh, provide some comparison uh, result uh, to the competitors and uh, ask us, tell them what, what they did uh, in the market. Okay, so we have seven steps uh, in order to reach our goal. So uh, in fact, those steps, it's not defined by myself, it's defined by Professor, Professor Young. We have seven steps, uh, which including the first step, uh, we have to collect publicly available data, which including like company disclosure, uh, for example, their 10K report or their annual report. And of course, news article is also important uh, data source right now. So we collect uh, data like that. The reason we collect data, it is because we have to build a machine reading comprehension model. Uh, we have to input those data to 
uh, the computer and the teach computer what is the best report and what is the bad report, something like that. So uh, we have to uh, training uh, machine learning model. So we use a kernel we call the Google Bird to, to do that. And uh, because of the bird, that's the reason we need the data. So uh, we use bird to uh, extract the label of relevance uh, of the ESG key issues for each report. I will show you one example later. So after we got uh, the label of relevance for each report, which is some numbers. So based on the number, maybe we can build some first uh, application, which is step number five to step number seven. So we predict their ESG rating uh, result based on the draft version of the report they have right now. And also provide a competitive, uh, compare the, 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 their ESG performance to uh, their competitors. Okay, so um, what is the machine reading comprehension task? Right now I can give you one uh, example. Uh, you can input the sentence like this to the computer. And the computer, after computer read, uh, the sentence they can tell you uh, the computer can tell you from its perspective the sentence is highly related to an uh, issue a esg issue named re renewable energy so it is very similar as the high highlight uh, uh, technology we, we have right now so this is the machine reading comprehension task so in order to do that uh, we have to collect data uh, the data we have right now, we have more than 500 um, disclosures uh, from the internet. Uh, yeah, because we have to, like I said, we have to tell uh, computer what is the best report and what is the bad report. Okay, so this, this is the list that we, we have right now, totally 576 uh, reports, totally. And including 10K report, annual report, sustainability, CSR, and the ESG reports. And from 2020 to 2021. Okay, then what is ESG key issues? Uh, here is another um, table published by MSDI. So they have three pillars, uh, environment, social, and also governance. And there are so many detailed uh, issues listed right here. For example, carbon emission, which is a part of environment, and the uh, labor management, a part of social, and also for pay, part of uh, governance. And uh, uh, we also got the table like this, very detailed explain what is uh, bio biodiversity and the land use, what is uh, labor management. I, I won't go through in detail of this table. Uh, right now, but uh, I can give you one example. What is both? Uh, if you remember what I uh, shared earlier, uh, this is the uh, both is a part of uh, governance. So governance here, we, we the m most important uh, factor in the governance is transparency. So if you have a company and you you have a big decision has to be made. So you, you will ask someone, some committee come to the meeting, right? So the question is, uh, who can join the meeting with you? Who cannot? That is a major problem if you have a company like that. Decision, make the decision who can become the committee. Uh, it's uh, the issue for uh, required. Okay, so uh, if, if you take action on uh, defining uh, the committees for your company, that is one of the action you take. And the first, that is one of the uh, topic that MSCI is searching for from your reports, from your disclosures. Okay, so uh, now we have data, we have, um, we have rating results. So we have to build a machine reading conversion model based on Google Bird. So this is our idea. We propose a cascaded ensemble in, in method which including two models. The first one, uh, relevant uh, evaluator. The second one, uh, rating prediction. So right now we can input the 10K report into the first model and get the label of relevance for each report. Then we can input the label of relevance to the second model. Then we can predict their ESG ratings. Right now I put some numbers right here uh, because we have a lot of machine learning technology inside. So uh, they are, those numbers are 
uh, the classification accuracy or the performance we have right now. Then what is Google Bird? Uh, Google Bird was published by Google, uh, by, by, yeah, by Google, obviously. And uh, uh, the reason we pick up this uh, architecture because they have a predefined, uh, we call it pre-training process. Uh, they, they teaching uh, computer to, to read uh, more than 50 uh, billion, millions of um, Wikipedia articles, all of which means uh, you can imagine that computer already have, have some general uh, knowledge because of the Wikipedia um, articles. But uh, like computer doesn't know anything about related to ESG. They don't have, they don't know the ESG language. So fortunately, Google Bird provide a fine tuning process. So the only thing we have to do is uh, taking the pre-training model and the tuning the model by using uh, the, the ESG data we have, which is a company disclosures. And uh, uh, we pick up, uh, we use one of the tasks provided by uh, Google Bird, which is single sentence classification task. Imagine that we can input whatever sentence into Google Bird, and the Google Bird can tell us this sentence is so close to the governance pillar, or that sentence is so close to carbon emission. Carbon emission. So uh, this is the, the idea. Um, of the machine reading convention model. Yeah, there are so many uh, similar ideas uh, right now based on Google Bird. Uh, this is BioBird. And what is our preliminary result? So uh, this, this is a table uh, which outputted from our model. As you can see, uh, we input uh, our customer's report into uh, into the model and uh, they, they, the, the model can generate some numbers right here, right here. So um, as you can see, uh, our customer perform very good performance uh, in their report on the issue of labor management. The reason they are trying to say uh, in their report is they have, um, they, they trying very hard to um, uh, create a gender uh, fairness uh, working environment in their company. So they, they try very hard to explain what, how many actions they take. So that's a reason the number uh, is higher than uh, some other uh, issues. However, the, the number or the table like this is very difficult to read. So we also provide a visualized version. So um, at the X axis or horizontal axis here means the issues weight and the y axis vertical axis here means uh, uh, the similarity of uh, the key issues so every circle in this diagram uh, it's one uh, issue defined by msci and the, the circle if the circle distribution is around this area which means uh, they prefer very bad performance and if the circle around here uh, distributed in this area means they have very good performance. So helping, uh, we use this diagram to support our customer to understand what is their performance right now. And we also provide a tool uh, because right now they are preparing the ESG report for the next year. So of course they can input some sentence right here and we can calculate a result like this. Uh, in real time. So this is one example, uh, they, they provide some uh, sentence uh, to us. Of course, we can predict uh, based on the concept like this, uh, what is the uh, rating result. Uh, yeah, this is a example. Uh, a graphical user interface application we provide to our customer. And we also provide a matrix, comparison matrix like this to uh, the to, to learn. So as you can see, our customer get uh, double A in the past year, and the lab performed very um, great here, means the number is below the average. So uh, they got very uh, bad performance on the governance pillar. So one way that we can do is maybe uh, we can send some uh, other report they from their competitors. They perform very good performance on governance or uh, taking the Google um, 
requires the extension. They are so focused on the environment, telling people what kind of renewable energy they take uh, in their headquarters, in, in their building, uh, what kind of energy they, they use uh, in, in their building. So uh, they, they prefer very good performance on that. So if our customer wants to improve their environmental uh, result, maybe uh, they can take a look what kind of action that Google take or what kind of action that this company take. That is so important for our customer in order to uh, get better performance for the next year. Okay, how about our future works? Uh, because we, we are thinking um, the, this kind of methodology not apply for um, ESG only, but also SDG, because SDG uh, in SDG, uh, they also have very clear definition for uh, 17 uh, issues. And uh, of course, for each issue, uh, they belongs to one of the pillar in the uh, ESG. So uh, if you think about the, the presentation I gave to, to give uh, right here, there are three major factors in order to apply this kind of methodology. The first one uh, is the key issues. Uh, MSI defined key issues. And the second one, uh, we need the data, uh, as much data as possible. And the last one, uh, uh, and uh, of course, the, the last one, uh, in fact, is rating results. And uh, we, we need the three factors in order to implement our solution. But think about SDG. First of all, we will have a, we already have the issue list right here. And uh, we also have the uh, SDG rank, rank, ranking result. Uh, in fact, you can uh, call for it from the THE uh, website. So we already have a thousand, around a thousand one hundred uh, rating result right here. So the only thing that we need right now is some data uh, represented for each university. Then maybe we can, again, uh, tell computer what is the best SDG report, what is bad um, SDG report based on the ranking uh, result right here. Then we, we can calculate the level of relevance for each SDG report. Then we can build a uh, SDG or even TH ranking prediction model in the future. Okay, so this is our uh, idea right now, but we didn't have any idea about what kind of data that we are going to use. That is another problem. So uh, any idea, maybe, maybe we can discuss that uh, later. Okay, so thank you very much. So this is my presentation today. Thank you. Oh, um, back to the screen again. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Lu. And I think uh, Professor Lu uh, brought up some attention about the uh, ESG. And also in the last couple of uh, slides, he showed the SDG. So there are two kinds of uh, university ranking in the world. THE, they will take uh, SDG as a global impact ranking. And right now the QS take ESG as a ranking criteria. Also uh, do the uh, university ranking. So it's quite important to many administrative officers in the university. Okay, so I think it's time to take a group photo. So. Would you please um, turn on your video so we can take a group photo? And also, I would like to welcome the audience uh, in in our in, in our classroom. Come forward, come forward. Here we can take a group photo. So, Jeffrey, are you going to take a group photo here? Jeffrey, are you going to take a group photo? Yes, my colleague will do this. So okay. uh, may I uh, invite all of Change you to- Change the video. Yeah, turn on the- Turn webcam. the video from here. 
and uh, I will yeah, just change a little bit. Yes, yeah, a lot of people here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see, there are uh, crowded people in our main conference room. Okay. So everyone get close. Come forward. Come forward. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this is good. Look at the camera over there. Great. Okay. I, I need to put on my mask. <laughs> Sorry, it's still. Okay. So, Jeffrey, um, are you going to take one, two, yes. three? One, two, three. Okay, again. One, okay. two, three. Okay, is that okay, Annie and Linda? Right. <laughs> okay, good. We Thank would like to much. take a, a live picture from our live studio. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for our audience come forward. Yeah, please back to your seat. So we have uh, completed three uh, distinguished uh, talk uh, made by uh, Professor Hiro Aki Okata and Professor uh, Owen Liu and I. So I would like to take any uh, question or comments from you to our our speakers, or we, we can discuss in the panel. So right now is our panel discussion time. So it's a free for everyone. You can raise question to a specific speakers or raise a question for group discussion. Or we can have a. I I, I saw some of our. Uh, audience in yeah in our live studio already can raise some question. So could we move our camera to Posty Jump? Okay. Yeah, good. Okay. So please change uh, from your uh, slide. Uh, from your previous big project, uh, uh, what is the KPI index? And now, uh, how many countries and uh, how many universities uh, participate or join this your uh, project? Group? This is the first one. How many countries and how many universities? And second to uh, progress uh, in the future of your big project in the future your big project international linking research uh, what should we do or prepare something in Taiwan and to cooperate this project two question thank you okay thank you very much professor Tosti Jan Professor uh, Zhang's question is to uh, Professor Ogata. There are two questions. May I repeat again? Maybe pro probably the microphone is, uh, my mind is better. So the first question is uh, how many university, uh, how many countries and the universities participate in your book role? That's the first question. And the second question is about the new project of uh, how can he uh, JSPS that international leading project? So, what your expectation from Taiwanese uh, scholars? What what should Taiwan scholars should prepare for that project? So, Hiroaki, please. Thank you, thank you very much for the yeah question. Yeah, that's important. So, uh, may I share my screen? Okay. And share the slide. Yes. Yeah. yeah screen. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 This is the uh, project. Our sorry, it's uh, Japanese, but uh, I think you can. Yes. Read uh, kanji. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, 
here is some uh, uh, the partners. Yeah, which they are using uh, background. Um, so we have some uh, Japanese universities and also uh, K twelve and also Taiwan and also India. So in India, <clears throat> uh, yeah, several years of Kyoto list of the uh, institution in India. So several. Uh, the universities are already used a uh, book crawl, already using a uh, book crawl, yeah. So because, why? <laughs> yeah, because, because the, uh, uh, one of the, uh, <clears throat> uh, our lab members come from India, IIT Bombay, he graduated uh, IIT Bombay, and uh, his colleague is the working in uh, uh, Indian MOOC. So most of them are using book loan with Indian MOOC, yeah. And they are really want to I mean, uh, analyze the data with the MOOC and the book loan, yeah. And that's why it's the most many uh, uh, universities are now using book loan in India also. In Taiwan also, yeah, I think this is just uh, part of the uh, list of the university in Taiwan, but also, yeah, also many universities are currently uh, using book law in Taiwan, thanks to uh, Professor uh, Stephen Yang, yeah. Okay, so here is the answer, my answer for one for the first question. And for the second question, yes, we expect uh, Taiwanese researchers to uh, provide opportunity to do some uh, joint research in Taiwan. Uh, yeah, we because we send uh, young scholars, we will send young scholars to Taiwan and then maybe if you can provide some uh, uh, desks and chairs and yeah, research environment, and then uh, uh, set up some uh, opportunities to do research with the Taiwanese researchers. Also, we also want to uh, communicate, I mean, uh, have a uh, uh, research meeting constantly, yeah, and then uh, to do research. And the important thing is the, to publish the paper together, <laughs> yeah, to do research together and to publish the, uh, write the paper together is the, yeah, important. Okay. Is that <laughs> the answer? Oh, maybe Hiroki, could you show show us the, the slide? Yeah. Yeah. This one. Yeah, yeah, this one. Okay. I, um, this one has a more clear picture. Uh. Mm -hmm. So as uh, Hiroki mentioned, uh, Taiwan's uh, scholars uh, need to uh, host the Japanese researchers because the, I think this project from the Japanese side is to develop uh, Japanese uh, young scholars, uh, especially for the postdoctor and uh, uh, doctoral students. So the government, Japanese government, is going to send out the young scholars to overseas and probably stay for two or three years, as we can see from the button of the slide. And for those uh, scholars, uh, they need a place to do research. So Taiwan is a very good place and host those uh, young scholar from Japanese, from Japan. So uh, in, in Taiwan, we need some uh, facilities and uh, at least we need a research room, right? Research room and the research lab and allow the scholars, uh, Japanese scholars to access uh, research facilities in uh, in Taiwan's university. I think that's the, the, the mainly 
uh, Taiwanese uh, scholars need to prepare. And uh, also, uh, I, I, as shown in this slide, the KPI of this project is a high quality international joint paper. So it must be written by two sides, Japan and uh, Taiwan. So I think it's a good for Japanese scholar and also good to Taiwan. We can have international collaboration paper. And uh, for those paper, they need to be on the top 10%. So it's good things to improve the quality of uh, both countries of paper. Uh, that's, that's really good. And as regarding the funding, uh, because Japanese government will pay all the money for for Japan's uh, scholars. So Taiwan's only prepare a place and the facilities. I think that's good for Taiwan's local scholars. Okay, that's uh, as far as I can read from this slide. I, I believe there are still uh, many other uh, insight information. Uh, we can uh, catch on that later after the panel. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, any any other question from online or from our on-site friends? To again, question to Owen, not to me, <laughs> Cassie. Okay, Professor Lin, Cassie Lin. So, could the camera move a little bit to? Uh, um, I appreciate uh, the presentation from the professor of that time. But as a, especially, uh, I found the inner presentation in case 40. Okay. 40. You have a uh, demonstrated uh, SDG circle and you put the SDG 4 in the center. Okay. So I'm quite impressed that uh, in your page 40 uh, presentation slide. Um, I believe it's very important to um, do some sustainability education data with uh, Windows. So my uh, sorry, Professor Lin. Uh, you are on mute. Please unmute. Mm -hmm. It's on your hierarchy. It's on your the forty fortieth page on your slide. I think it's regarding the uh, quality education, uh, SDG four. So could you share us the, the slide? Okay, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. Yeah, exactly this one. Okay, I I couldn't. <laughs> Catch the uh, question because the yeah voice was. Would you, Cassie? Would you repeat repeat the question, please? Yeah, Cassie will repeat her question. Ah, okay. Can you hear me? Oh yes. Uh, okay. I appreciate your slides, and uh, um, first we also reduce uh, the Google. So the world of free, um, give all of our teachers and students a platform that we can do lots of education. Even in a COVID-19 stage, we can keep the learning never stops. Okay. Uh, so I think the Bulldog uh, has increased the uh, um, characteristic of the SDG for we have uh, quality education as the sustainable education. But my problem is that when we're trying to put our SDG 4 in the center, and uh, we have other goals around. So, uh, how can we do to uh, linking, for example, the SDG 4 to SDG 2, no hungry, or for example, to linking the 4 to 6 uh, mm -hmm. water? So, how can we uh, give all our teachers some uh, uh, suggestion? We can do more beginning from the rural, beginning from the higher education and connecting to other goals. Yeah. I think uh, Cassie's uh, question is how you link 
mm -hmm. uh, quality education to the rest of uh, 16 SDG goal? Oh, yeah, that, that's a good question. That's a good question. I, yeah, actually, uh, I think, yeah, in Japan, uh, there are a lot of the uh, events, I mean, uh, the workshops are currently ongoing in many universities in Japan. Also, in Taiwan also, you have a lot of the workshops and the events where the student involved in K-12, also in university, but but most of them uh, just do it. <laughs> just, uh, for example, to correct the uh, quality of the, <clears throat> the data about the quality of the air or the quality of the water or something like that. And then uh, when after they finish the workshop and then forget, yeah. So uh, if we can use the book row to record all the data, including the, some data from the sensors and then uh, it's, I mean, useful for all the students and yeah, by sharing this kind of the experience, yeah. So that is, is that my, is that answer for, for you? Well, I think uh, uh, Casey's question is uh, could, could open to everyone yep. in the, the panel, sir. So why is uh, the core, quality education is the core of SDG, especially mm -hmm. from an educator's uh, point of view. Um, I think uh, education can link to uh, everything, uh, yeah. such as uh, med medical, or water, you need to do research to preserve the water and uh, change the climate. And also education is, uh, it's very fun fundamental to the uh, cultivate the students' the concept and the, their visions. Uh, so not only to, you know, to, to, uh, such as uh, environment protections. Uh, right now, it's not just a, a claim; it's an action. So this uh, kind of action need to conduct it through the schools uh, and through the educations. Uh, so education almost can play a very important roles in every uh, categories. Uh, I, I would like to take a, a share my uh, a viewpoint of uh, the resilience. Uh, like the resilience is, uh, is um, why now is an important issue so for us to survive from the dramatic change of environment, not just, uh, you know, not just environment, also the social, we will have some uh, dramatic change, right? Uh, for example, the, the climate change, the, the rainfall and the, the weather, uh, it's been affecting us a lot. And for the socials, uh, for example, the COVID-19, but a, a lot of impact to our social life and our daily life. And for education, it's, it's like a suddenly, uh, when, when students and the teachers cannot come to schools, what, what we, continue to maintain our education. And it, at this moment, book role or the digital environment can play important roles to extend and uh, disconnect education. So, so I, I recall in Taiwan, probably in Japan, it's the same thing. When the COVID-19 come and the school shut down, so just overnight, every teachers and uh, students need to take digital learning immediately. So everyone becomes a master of that. Uh, just like us, right now we have an international webinar, mainly due to the COVID-19 is still undergoing. So we cannot do face-to-face -face inside meeting. Instead, we need to take the internet. Still continue our uh, communication and uh, you know, more broad, vision of uh, education yeah okay so any comments from our audience oh you 
Professor Ye, you, you probably need to turn on your video or audio. Right, all right, okay. okay. Thank you, yes. Prof. Yeah. And I, I'd like to ask one question uh, addressed to Professor Hiraki. Um, very admiring system. Uh, you just presented a very impressive system uh, caring about the so called evidence based learning. And you, you try to, you know, you utilizing the uh, developed book role partnership uh, system uh, to enhance that part. That is really impressive. But I'm just wondering uh, from the uh, sustainability or sustainable education point of view, maybe we kind of are more concerned about what uh, all those things that learned from the school that can be, you know, implemented in the practical like a daily life uh, in enhancing sustainability. So I'm just wondering if the system, you know, for the for the current, uh, you know, stage is probably uh, would be able to assess the learning performance of the student uh, from their activities. But uh, what if uh, there's uh, some dimensions that can be, you know, a more forward uh, looking in a way as try to you know judging the effectiveness or the achievement that probably we can project in the future about how they will implement uh what they learned in the future in, in you know uh, uh in enhancing more the sustainability uh issues or, or like implementation point of view is there any uh some other the adjustment or enhancement that your system probably will be able to consider in the future. I, 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 I'd like to, you know, uh, you share uh, some kind of your prestigious uh, point of view and how you are thinking on that. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Ye, yeah, for the question. Yeah, that's, oh yeah, very important, yes. Uh, yeah, in, yeah, most, most of the yeah, students, yeah, they learn a lot of the concept inside school, but yeah, also important to implement their concept I mean, in, in, in the, their daily life, yeah. So, yeah, so it's a very difficult question, but uh, yes, uh, actually, yeah. Uh, we can uh, maybe uh, to to provide some awareness of the uh, concept or uh, or some activities for the SDGs about yeah. Uh, I mean, we can uh, uh, develop some uh, functions to uh, enhance the awareness of these, uh, this kind of the uh, important concept in their daily life. Then, yeah, I think the, yeah, we need to, Remind them about the SDGs concept <laughs> in their daily life to uh, enhance more uh, 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 activities. Yeah, so that's all. That's all. Yeah, yes. I, I think this is okay. Thank you. Yeah, I also like to, I, I would like to share my opinion about the evidence. Uh, I recall it's a it's, it's a good saying from it's like a Michael Clark or something I I, I forgot his name a, a very famous uh, business uh, in in business area he said uh, we need to measure in order to make improve make to improvement so so that's why the evidence is so important we have to collect the data and uh, do a kind of a major in order to provide evidence. And with the evidence, we can uh, make uh, improvement. Uh, as, as I uh, shared with uh, one slide, 
one, one of my slides. So, so for now data driven uh, education, everything needs to have evidence. So I think in digital learning environment is uh, it's quite a good opportunity to fulfill this, uh, this goal. But uh, also in the contrast is, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, not everything can be measured and not, not everything measured is accountable. Right? So we need to do some balance between the measurable and the accountable and lead to a different viewpoint of evidence. So evidence, they have a ground truth evidence and some of the evidence is just a figure counted. So uh, we still need to consider more about our humanity, uh, our human conditions uh, in order to, uh, to you know, provide a more human oriented or human centered evidence-based learning analytics, something like that. Okay. So anyone would like to share your comments? Uh, Prof. Yang, I also have uh, one question for you. <laughs> sure, sure. No problem. Uh, I'm, I'm particularly interested in the idea of accountability. And uh, maybe from your point of view, how do you think um, is accountability have to do uh, with like a, with some kind of in conjunction with our legitimate system or kind of like an incentive reward system? So to set up those concepts in the education uh, uh, system that we have, uh, and therefore maybe I, I'm 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 thinking about that. Is like for example, if you compare the environment in Japan or versus in Taiwan, okay? You know, for Japanese, they, they kind of very responsible for their behavior. Uh, no matter you, uh, if you are a citizen or, or some po politicians, okay? But uh, it seems like the accountability is an important issue now in Taiwan. I just wonder, uh, how, how, uh, what, what is your like, uh, you know, insight that we can do it in a more practical way uh, from the education point of view uh, to enhance the sustainability, you know, uh, pursuing in the future? <laughs> thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Professor Ye. Um... Accountability, this term, I think there are all kinds of a definition of accountability. Right? Uh, the majority is uh, almost equal to responsibility, which means the one needs to his own or her own responsibility in order to get the job done. So from this point of view, uh, you can say that uh, accountable is some kind of a responsible. Okay, you need to be responsible for his duty and his uh, obligations. But, but uh, well, I, I think that's a kind of is a more, you know, strict definition of accountability. So, but from the a soft point of view, accountability should be a, you know, a, a competence or a, a, or a, a hard feeling. It's a kind of a feeling. You, you need to fear to be responsible in order to take that uh, a very serious uh, job. I, I take the example as a father. To be a father, what is your accountability or what is your responsibility? Raise kids, earn money, make your home, make your family, have a good living. I think that's accountability, right? As long as the father do his job, then he, the society will say, oh, well, you are a responsible father. But from my point of view, responsible or accountable is much more than that. You still have to take care of them, not just provide their quality life. Instead, you need to provide both quality life and the spiritual. Okay, you need to really care about your family. Take all the, the, the actions or take all the movement to make them happy. 
I think that's a kind of uh, accountability, at least from my point of view. That's from a father, as well as uh, from a teachers. So, like, uh, there are many students in the audience are my, are, them, are my former students. So, as an the accountability or responsibility of our teachers, uh, I let them graduate, then I already fulfill my responsibility. But after their graduation, we keep on a good communication and still encourage them to move on to pursue their better career. I think that's as an accountability as an advisor. It's not so the education is a continual job. It's a seamless job. So accountability issue from this point of view, then it's totally different from um, well, the job, job oriented accountability. That's my opinion. In fact, I can speak that much better in 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 Mandarin. But anyway, because I need to speak in, in English, so I, uh, I try to interpret my best. I can talk Thank to you, you in Chinese. Thank you, Prof. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> any, any audience, any uh, panelists that would like to share your comments? So how about we stop at uh, the, the high point when everyone uh, anticipating much more than, but instead we should stop at right now to let everyone uh, try to recall and remember what we've been discussed. So it's, uh, Jeffrey, should we stop here? Yes, okay. Uh, and I would like to thank you all, uh, Professor Yang, Professor Ogata, and Professor Liu, and each uh, participant here. Uh, it is great to have you uh, in this webinar, uh, making this event possible and now very successful. Uh, we will have more webinars on sustainability in the digital age. Please join us. I hope I can see you shortly. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Thank bye you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Huh?